Hello, Retro Tech Ralph here. I've got a new gadget in the garage. It is a desolder sucker. And no, I didn't go out and buy one that's really, really expensive. I got a cheap one. Because that's, yes. <laughs> I can't afford one that's 100 quid, so I bought this one off eBay. And I think they're about, I think they're 18 quid, maybe 20 quid or something from China. No, it took three days, well, four days to get here, so. I think in the description it did say it was from China but we look right down the bottom of the description it did say it was in the UK and it's turned up today so if you understand Chinese which I don't um, yes it's a um, soldering iron with a desolder sucker but we'll go through that in a minute yeah nothing on, on English apart from 30 watts and it works on 220 volts at 50 Hertz and I don't know Quan Zi Dong Zi Kui Yes, you heard me right. So let's get this unboxed and I'll um I'll show you what is inside. So what you get with it is a desoldering iron. Simple as I have to change the plug on the end because this is a European and I am in the UK and yeah I can use an adapter and test if it works but it, it worries me. I've, I've watched the video on these, on these before. It's one reason I bought this is because I know it can be okay but it's also very dangerous at the same time as well. Two reasons. One, it's got two wires. There's no earth at all on this so it's just a two cable brown, blue, or red, black, whatever, two cables, positive, negative, that go into this. Whatever way around it is, I don't know. Secondly, there's absolutely no cable strain relief at all. That kind of comes out when it feels like it. So that really needs addressing before I even attempt to switch this thing on. Right, so basically, you get this with it. To desolder pump, solder it heats up on the end, and you press this button, which, I've watched, like I said, I've watched videos, and there's a there's a magnetic pump in here, there's an electromagnet inside, which sucks, you press the button and it pulls the piston back, which sends sucks in, which is great, sucks in through the nozzle there. And you let go, and it will either crap it out all inside here or inside here, or it'll spit it back out again. But I've been told that if you press that for too long, the electromagnet in here will heat up very quickly. So I need to suck and then out. You also get a um, wire, because I'll guess that this will be clogging up very, very quickly. So you need a piece of wire to um, declog it and prod in. Hopefully there's no electrics in there, otherwise I will be going bang. And a um, second nozzle, which if you notice on here, it's a lot wider than the original. So probably we'll be using that one to get a lot more um, solar out, because we'll be using the older stuff. Instead of latest technology, will be a little bit of solder and a tiny microscopic contact. So it will need something like that. So I'll probably take it off and put one of them. I'm going to actually order some more nozzles for those anyway because I can see these being ruined very quickly but at least you get two with them anyway the price really wasn't bad so <sighs> come off again I'm not happy with this at all it's possibly brand new but it just looks like it's been used even the box came and it got a big hole in the side I mean But if it works, it's going to be good. So I need to upgrade this a little bit. So let's put these to one side or on the floor, like I just have done with the wire. Good luck finding that. And I'm going to take the pieces, one, two, three screws. This, oh dear, right. Uh, another inside there. I had a thought that it would suck through there and it would go up this pipe and collect, but then it's not. This is actual the the cable for the pump. Actually it's cable for the elements. If you can see inside there there's the two white yeah 
cables being protected from the heat with it. So I need to strip this down before I even take anything off. That will unscrew, but I'm not sure if unscrewing that is a... Yeah, it's okay. I need to hold on to that so I don't rip these cables out of here. Now, technically, that's the way it goes to get your solder out. And that comes off there. Inside here, apparently, in that hole down there is an electromagnet, which then will put suck this down to give you the sucking of the, the solder. I mean, it just makes it a, a bit easier to try and desolder stuff. I've got a load of circuit boards and motherboards and all sorts of boards. I want to get parts off so I can possibly use in the future for something else. But at the minute, they're just sat there doing absolutely nothing. Does that go that way? Maybe I should have watched what I was doing to start with. No. Yeah, that can't go that way, can it? Oh, hang on. Yeah, because it sucks it in and it gives you that decent sucking motion. Where that way, where it? Let's try that way again. No, I don't think that is the right way because it gets pushed down there, so it will have to be that way. So let's get this unstrapped because I've got a bad feeling these are the contacts in here or the cable in here is going to be absolutely shocking. So give us a sec, I'll get a screwdriver and take it to pieces. Okay, I think we're in as much pieces as I'm comfortable with. Right, screw on the side there, holds the nozzle in place, the nozzle, there's a cable release, well, screw there as well. Right, in this rubber hose here, let me get you in a little bit, tight, 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 there we go. Right, this rubber hose here ha houses the two cables for this, which have got heat protection, two bits of it on. I think, I hope, and a coil there which heats up, which gives you your soldering iron. That goes through and in, right. I don't think I should need to take that off. So it doesn't hold the nozzle in place, that just kind of screw just goes into that, that bit only. Now that screw holds that into there, which the cables go up here and into this, right. The guy's video I watched, oh, if I can find it, I'll put, put a link in the description, because it, it was alright, it, it, it convinced me to buy it, but it also convinced me to be careful with this as well. That switch, nice clicky switch, but the cables on here, just, the black, actually, the black and the red will be carrying, or maybe the blue and the red, what? Maybe carrying all the power, there's only two cables there, inside, one looks kind of, I'll assume red. Looks a bit brown. And there's a blue. Right, okay. So we're even going... Mm. To my eyes it looks wrong, otherwise I've been completely colourblind. But it goes from there through the... There's three diodes, well, four diodes and then a capacitor. But there's also this bit on here which I'm a bit worried about. There's a... If you look carefully, there's a spring in there. And then a piece of copper, which I'm assuming is on that side to the left. And if it overheats, it will raise up. At the minute it's down with the spring. If it heats up it'll go like that and then the circuit's broken it'll turn off. In theory. But I don't know. I honestly don't know. But like you said the, the, the red and the black cables are actually carrying all the, um, the current and these look like standard everyday thin cables which don't does not fill me with any sense of anything. I mean, why is the green cable there? I see only two goes down there, so that's the element, the red from the switch, and then the green from return back. But why is the black there? The black and the blue are attached to the switch. What? I'm sure there's people out there that understand electrics. I do to an extent that I'm comfortable enough with being a bit stupid and sometimes get away with it and sometimes don't. Okay, we'll leave that as is at the moment. 
So the element heats up, you press that and that is for the switch. Right, that's for the switch for the pump. Okay, so why does that go to the heating element and why does it not go to the pump down there? Unless it does, that's why the red goes in, but then the red carries on down here to the heating element as well as the green. Okay, fine, got it here. So then the blue and the, the, the black and the red obviously feed into the switch, the blue comes back out and the red comes... Oh, no. Okay. Basically a cable will go into and then heat the element up and then go to the switch to heat to do the um, switch. Right, okay. So it's on the same circuit but a little bit different. Right, I'm not happy with the thickness of the cables though, I'm really not. So, I'm going to screw that back on. I need to do the plug and I need to do a strain relief on this. So, what he actually recommends... I mean, look at that, it's just... it's nothing. I mean, I could fill it with hot glue. I could do what he suggests by getting a cable tie around there and, and stopping it, but I think I'm going to strip it further. But if I strip it further and it wraps around this, the safety switch, hmm, I have a problem there. Because mm, that's given me no strain relief at all. It doesn't even go into there and twist round. I'm moving that quite a bit and I think it's dangerous. <laughs> I think it's dangerous, yeah. Alright. So let me work on... Let me put, I've got some cable ties somewhere. Let me put a cable tie on this to stop it from going any further out than what that is. Give me some sort of hope that I'm not going to kill myself by using this. So I think I'm maybe about, about there-ish. So if it's about, yeah, on that bend there will give me enough that it will not come out of there, but I need to, I think I need to strip the cable a bit to not make it so rigid. It is cold in here anyway, because it's winter, but I need it to be somewhat hmm, useful. Or I literally put that in, kick the crap out of that with um, hot glue but hold it up like that and then hot glue from underneath and let it set so it's holding the cable down there that might be an idea because that screws in place and I can hot glue inside that to maybe wedge that in but holding it upside down so it doesn't do too much I just basically need it to stay where the bloody hell it is without any movement at all but not put too much in so I'll be able to pull it out. There is a little bit there, but I feel like it's pulling on that circuit board. I'm not happy at all, you know. <sighs> Do you love Chinese rip-offs? Well, let me change rip-off. It's a Chinese bad idea. Because that's going to break in there. Okay, give me two minutes and let me rethink this one and see what I can do. Right, we're all back together again. I found out what the people are, actually. I, um watch to start with to learn about what this thing is it's actually make do and hack get a review to start with on how to do this basically and the second person it, it did a review on an unboxing and showing how it works and stuff the second one is andrew mcneil so um I'll put a link in the description somewhere below. Andrew McNeil, the both are from 2016, so this is obviously, um, yeah, I'm three years behind everything, as usual. Retro tech, Ralph, I'm still bloody retro. So, <clears throat> so I'm back together again. That's covered over, right place, that's screwed in, even though I'm not that happy. That has to come off anyway when all this in here gets clogged up. So, and I've also, if you look inside there, if you can see, which you can't, there's a cable restraint in there a cable tie in there give you a little bit more of a um there we go that's the gray bit inside it's in the right spot and i'm gonna give it a little bit more um yeah what i'm gonna do since the glue gun's out i'm gonna pour a load of glue in there make sure it's upright and then put that back in so this will give a little bit of um hopefully not be able to rag it out of the um of the back of the the unit so, and then, if I, keep it, if I put it down there, then it's obviously going to go pour straight in. So, I need to attempt to pour 
in but hold up. I mean the cable tie is in there giving you a bit, of, a bit more of a, an attempt at but when, the, when the, most of the hot glue goes in it will help even more. I don't want to plug up all these holes so I can't put too too much in but enough to make it a decent solid enough sort of help out at least anyway. Still got to change the plug over anyway because that's it's not even straight. Hmm. Yeah, I've got no faith in that whatsoever. Actually, to be honest, while I'm waiting for cable tie to uh, warm up, let's get rid of that completely. Yeah. Gone. So I can start to strip this down while I'm waiting. And I have a plug. And there's only two... Ah, looks like the um, glue gun's nearly ready. There's only two why is there anyway that it doesn't look brown they don't look red either but they'll go in a plug socket a uk plug socket i'm not happy about doing this because i prefer an earth cable on there and there is no earthing on this i can't even think if you can put one on the outside of here put another cable through round and onto there to tie it on if that would actually work as an earth but let's see what happens and um yeah, let's, let's see if I don't kill myself on this one, shall we? This might be another electrocution um, video, so, yay! Watch and learn. Right, cable restraint done. Glued in, bit of hot glue, still setting, but I am don't give a monkey's about it looks so bad, it's not coming off anymore. That is the main thing with it. Right. Plug on there, we'll need one in there. One in there, I need to be a bit shorter because I've cut that too long anyway. You know, I was actually going to do a video the other day because I was watching the television and it gave me the impression that young people haven't got a bloody clue about standard stuff that they should know about, i.e. plugs. I mean, I'll ask, turn around to me and says, look, can you, will you, um, I need to find out why this light isn't working. And I looked at it and I thought, well, first thing you look at is the bulb. Change the bulb. If it wasn't the bulb, you change the fuse. If it wasn't the fuse, I thought, people don't know how to change a plug socket because they're all moulded nowadays. They haven't got a clue. So I'm going to do a video on it, but hey-ho. doesn't really matter. Let the youth come to me when they need, need me to do something. It's like the cable, cable restraint on this as well. That's quite a good socket. Cut off something that I've, I've had, so... Yeah, it's nice to have things in the garage so I can use whenever I feel like it. It's like with the parts that I want to use for this. They will be there, I can use them whenever I need to. In mean, a normal standard plug socket, it doesn't come with a cable string. I've never known one with, with one of those on it. But all you basically do is, you can take that off anyway, which holds the cable down. I would actually, to be honest, go there and maybe tie this in to start with. with the bottom two screws which that will hold the cable tight in there with with the black insulation around it not the coloured yeah, a bit more need a better screwdriver for that then what you basically do is tie the brown wire or red wire depending on which manufacturer it's come from to the, can, the terminal with the fuse. And I, if you're watching this and you know what it is, it's sucking eggs, I know. But there are some really dumb people out there. But yeah, you've tied the, it's gonna be opposite on where this is at the moment anyway. So that will go inside there, unscrew the terminal, cut that to the right length, bear it, and then that one goes in there. Done, sorted, it's very, very easy. Except a lot of people don't know these things, so. Let me get on with that and I'll, when we're all done, and I'm going to try and see if this works and see if it actually sucks. Well, actually, see if it works. Turns on, to be honest. I've got not much faith in it. I just don't know. Socket ready. So I'll show you there, in case you ever need to change the socket. Red, blue, which is the new nowadays standard anyway. Right. Make do and hack actually recommend you use a 3 amp fuse instead of a 13. I'd rather this go instead of going bang and when it actually blows so clip it in and tie it in place 
Oh, I should have used the screwdriver set. Think about being a Patreon. Maybe not, maybe just donate a decent screwdriver set to me. So, that's in and done. Right. Hmm, this is where, the, this is the stage where my, my dad used to um, tell me, Mom, go on, you go and plug it in there, and he'd run away, in case anything happened. But I'm going to put the uh, nozzle on the end, the wider nozzle, on first. So that screws in place. Hand tight. Yeah, I might want to be tightened up a little bit later on. Leave a thin one there. I don't think I need anything that th that thick or thin. So everything's back in place as it should be, I hope. So get rid of the... Because I don't mind being left... Th oh, the 13 amps there anyway. It's far too much for this. I think. So, plugs in. Switches on now. So it hasn't blown. I haven't done anything else. Okay. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> Something smells. But I'm assuming it may be to do with... Actually, that, that isn't working at all. I'm hoping this is smelling because it's getting hotter on the end. It's getting warmer, but that isn't working. If you look at it, it's not even straight. Well, you're gonna see me go bang there, aren't you? I'll tell you what, that's a good idea. So you have to take that off in every so often anyway to clean out. So that's now released. Why did that not want to suck that back in again? Hmm. See, this doesn't fill me at any confidence at all. Maybe getting um, negative feedback on this. On eBay. Okay, try it again. So it's doing is buzzing. You can hear. It's not sucking the um, metal back in. Okay, let's get a few minutes to heat up and see if that makes any difference whatsoever. This is starting to smoke. I'll assume it's either down to something on the metals. It's coming straight from where the cables are attached inside of there. If it goes bang, I am not touching it at the moment. And still, that's not working again either. Whether or not there's a certain way that that goes in into the um, the shaft goes into the hole in the electromagnet, then I don't know. I just set that on the screensaver. Do, 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 do. That looks healthy, doesn't it? Yeah. Still no proper noise from that. Hmm. See, to take that off now, I have to hold on to that and twist this round. That's red up. So that's not really helping much. Right. Don't know what to do. See, as a desoldering tool. That now just completely fails. So do I get the <sighs> wire and shove it down the hole? No, I'll turn it off first. Then I'll shove it down the hole. I feel that actually springing in there, so it's actually on 
the back there. We're back on again, it's not even working. Oh, dismantle time again. This is 20 minutes later. I have tried everything I know. I've got a circuit board out to try and desolder from. Every time I press the button, it just buzzes. The electromagnet isn't working, and now it's not doing anything at all. But that nozzle is just not straight. Ten angles, it just buzzes. I mean, I'm trying to hold on to as much rubber or plastic as I can. It can't be a problem with the, the seal because that keeps clipping off anyway. That should go thud. And it's not. doing anything. I mean, it does get hot enough. Let me show you something. I'll put a smaller nozzle on this one to be honest so it's better. Right, um, that big blob of solder there. Pull on the end. My god. That is just ridiculously bad. I know what it is, the electromagnet down there isn't pulling in the, the shaft at the end of the, with the rubber on the end, it's not pulling it in, but temperature wise, oh come on, it's a brand new bloody nozzle. That's part as there has melted. If you look hard enough, it is actually melted the solder. So it is actually up to temperature. There you go, that bit's melted there. Because it's the cables come out the back of it, the black one. But I've just done this twice before and it's freed it to go into it. <sighs> I can't think what to do. And I daren't press that for too long because an electromagnet will overheat. I know this isn't the best way of doing it. Definitely in the shaft is definitely inside the magnet. It just won't pull it down and pull it back up again. Maybe there's more I need to di dismantle on here. Yeah, it says that while going through the main socket at the back. Oh, hello. Looks like my mod may have frigged things up a little. All right. Ah. I think. I've either got some glue in the back of there, and it's not doing this right. <sighs> well, over caution. Right, let's try something then, shall we? So we'll get this big bit of blob out of here then. So that goes on there. See, melts it. See, it's actually doing quite a good... Where are we? That one there. There's a nice big hole through that. Let's try this one here. Hold on, it smokes. There's nothing. Oh, there's a contact. There's a. Oh, I pushed that through. This is a part of. I think I'm wearing an alarm clock. <clears throat> yeah, let's try and kick a resistor out. Capacitor, should I say. Right there.
actually. That's really not bad. I think my modification has kind of tripped this switch off down here. Yeah, it's not exactly in the right place. So, do I leave that as loose? Yeah. So, for watching other videos and finding out why this thing cocks up, I've um, cocked up my own. Okay. But that's, that's fine, I can remedy that by taking the glue off, doing the cable tie a little bit looser or, or doing another alternative to getting the cable onto there. But yeah, okay, that's what works. Tight, it doesn't work. Untight. So do I leave that as that and then put some tape around the back of the bottom of here? Let's not tighten it up too much. This Australian roof is really good. I think I'll loosen that and tape it up. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, I think the moral of this is as follows. Turn it off, by the way. Yes, there are faults with this, and yes, I don't think this is going to last for 10 years, but... Don't expect it to. Look at that. It's actually, because that those there. Look, uh, it's actually not bad. That diode and the capacitors come out there, which is perfectly serviceable. Easily serviceable. Hmm. So me being an absolute idiot, <laughs> as um yeah, balls things up, but figure out what I've done anyway. So if you are going to modify one of these anyway, make sure you're an idiot, idiot, and make sure you're careful. I mean, to be honest, that isn't. Yeah, make sure your screws are tightened up properly because that's kind of got itself loose. A little or a lot. There we go. That's a lot straighter than that, to be honest. Right, so be careful for flip's sake. One of these. That's actually working. Okay, so I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to put some tape around there to hold that in place where it is. And yeah, give me a second. of black insulating tape around the back and bottom of there holes in place that this is my own fault I understand that but it must have just took that um cable out down there the um the copper contact inside here must be in something just the cable just pushing against it so it wouldn't do anything okay well, we'll um hmm what diode that one is can we read that one uh no I don't think so come on Zoom in. Use of the spectrum. Uh, no. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's going to help me get rid of a lot of crap in the garage where I can get rid of parts I can use on other things and take them off of boards like this. So okay, let, let, let's see what happens in the future. I mean, this board is actually a pain in the arse because it's been soldered on the, in the top. Instead of on the bottom, it's been soldered on the top. It's weird. So, um, yeah. This is one of the alarm clocks. I think we're radio CD alarm clock, which just doesn't work anymore. But, okay. Um, all right, one thumb up for this one, I think, because it's dodgy. Be careful, and we will be back to this in the future, I think. So, let's tie things away. Oh. Turn that off. So, um, <laughs> turned off. So, uh, like, subscribe, and be careful if you're going to buy one of these. And if you can upgrade it a little bit like I have done just then, then just beware that things do cock up. 
works, but it does actually work really well when it does. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna play with this a bit more. So thanks for watching. Um, like, subscribe. Can you, yeah, like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video, and bye bye for now.